Here. Council Member Eugene. Here. Council Member Tucker. Here. Here. Council Member Tucker. Here. Here. Please stand for the Pledge of Allegiance, please. Dennis, can you please see us? Yes. Ready? Begin. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you very much for that. And so what we'll do now is we'll go on to any adjustments to the agenda. No, sir. All right. Uh, announcements uh, of action taken in closed session. Uh, Mr. Mayor, there's nothing, no reportable action taken in closed session. Great. Thank you, Mr. Rita. So we'll move on to C1. So this is uh, public appearances. This is for matters not appearing on the agenda. So if you wish to address the council concerning any item within the council's jurisdiction, please raise your hand and be acknowledged by the mayor. At that time, state your name and address for the record. Um, the mayor reserves the right to place a time limit to each person's presentation of three minutes. It is requested the longer presentation you can submit to the council in writing. So do we have anybody for public comments for items not on the agenda? Seeing none, moving on to C2. For matters appearing on the agenda, if you wish to address council concerning any item appearing on the agenda, please raise your hand and be acknowledged by the mayor at that time. Uh, state your name and address for the record. The mayor reserves the place the time limit to each person's presentation to three minutes. Do we have anybody for public comments? Okay. Seeing none, we'll move on to item D, consent agenda. Move to approve. Okay, I got a motion. Second. Two seconds, please vote. All right, motion passed. Thank you very much. Moving on to action items. Uh, E1. Discussion action, City of Imperial Public Library, hours of operation. Amber is going to handle this one, as well as the next one. Okay. Mr. Mayor, members of the Council, the City of Imperial Public Library, hours of operation are Monday through Thursday, 10 a.m. till 7 p.m., Friday, 10 a.m. till 5 p.m., and Saturday, 10 a.m. until 2 p.m. While Community Services Office hours are from 8 a.m. until 5 p.m., Monday through Friday. The Community Services um, Office was moved into the library on October 31st of this year. In order to continue the same office hours, the library doors are open for public access. Between the hours of 8 a.m. until 10 a.m., Monday through Friday, the library is accessible to the public. During the month of November, the library was opened at 8 a.m. in order to provide public access to the Community Services Office. And during this time, library services were provided. The earlier hours received a positive response from our library patrons. The, de the, the Department of Community Services requests the changing of the library hours to open at 8 a.m. Monday through Friday, keeping the same closing times and Saturday or hours. It is the staff's recommendation that the City Council authorize the recommended hours of operation for the Imperial Public Library and Community Services Office. Um, office. Thank you. Do you have any questions on this? I'm always in favor of better hours than library, so that's awesome. So you got a, a lot of positive feedback on that? Yes, yes. And We're serving um, different different um, ages, and um, we have the, our older people coming in. And I think we could offer more programs for the younger, um, like the preschool ages. So like the, what is it, the old, uh, that we used to have over here? Yes, um, the rain. Family tree house. Yeah, family tree house. Yep. So services like that, we can, exactly. we can start offering for exactly. that for the stay-at-home Yes, and there is a grant coming up um, in 2020 uh, for early learning and families. Great. Not having trouble staffing the extra hours, changing people around. Um, that that's going to be depending. Right now, uh, with we're I'm being creative with the hours, okay. um, but right now we are missing our library supervisor. So um, with that person, we would be fine. Um, or as we move forward on the. Um, Agenda. Your, your agenda. And, yeah, has we have items as we talked about. Yes. If, if that goes through, that's, that's right. That takes care yeah. of. It. How are you liking in the office? It's great. <laughs> <laughs> I actually have the library page, um, regulars are starting to say hello to me, so I feel I feel <laughs> accepted. Good. <laughs> you get to see people during the day now too, not just be watched through glass. That's nice. Good. I like the hours. I'll move to approve the change in hours. You got a motion? Second. Two uh, second, please vote. Always good things to improve for the community. 
Okay, motion passed. Move it on to E2, discussion action. Third amendment to parks and landscape maintenance agreement with executive landscape. Mr. Mayor, members of the council, executive landscape entered into a two-year professional service agreement for park and landscape maintenance on January 4th of 2017. The agreement provides the po um, for the possibility of two one-year extensions, provided the extension is on the same terms and conditions. An additional one-year extension was approved by City Council on February 6th of um, 2019, extending the agreement through January 31st, 2020. The scope of work includes park and landscape maintenance service for 14 park and landscape areas. Executive Landscape agrees to extend its agreement on the same terms and conditions for one year extending the agreement through January 31st, 2021. The annual cost um, of $333,300 is budgeted for the current fiscal year. It is the department's recommend recommendation that council approve the third amendment to, amendment to this agreement with Executive Landscape for the extension of services for one year ending January 31st, 2021. Did they ever develop any kind of a um, performance evaluation tool for this contract? Not that I'm aware of. No, no. That seems to me, I mean, not that I'm unhappy with their right. service, right. but I think if we're going to continue to look at either extending their contract or it, down the road maybe renewing a new contract right. for them, it'd be nice if we actually had a performance evaluation that was done to show us here was the scope of work that was expected exactly. here are the results we've seen from that here's how we rate this on a scale of one to five or a to b a to f so we can have something to refer back to what i'd suggest is maybe uh and i've done this before where we've had this kind of contract is it may be something that your parks uh, superintendent that tony maybe on a quarterly basis goes around uh with with a a checklist or something with the contractor to talk about areas that are problem areas, areas where we've been getting some complaints because we do get some of those things coming in yeah. uh, and and just kind of does a quarterly evaluation of how things are going and then a year-end cumulative uh, evaluation. Here's where we're at and then you determine based on his recommendation do we continue on. You know, so that would that's what I'm talking about. If we have something like that here today, for example, you know, I, I would vote. I'm probably going to vote in favor of this anyways. Right, right. But it'd be nice to be able to refer to that and say, exactly. "Yeah, look, they've been doing what we wanted. They were evaluated. Here's what we said." Because we do know in this community there are there's a significant population that really does pay close attention to our landscaping and our parks and our roadways. So if we can show them, look, here's evidence that we're following through and monitoring that. We'll put together an evaluation pro uh, program then. That would be great. On that. Something to look at for the next year then as yeah. we move forward. Yes. From there. Yes. Okay. Any other questions? I was also interested what the plan is for those new trees that we displaced in Eager Park. We were, I was asking what the plan was in, um, they, they said that the average life lifetime of a tree is seven, right. urban tree is seven right. years right. because they aren't maintained properly. So right. are we planning on putting a drip system or something to keep those going? Right. I, I think right. they're, they're <laughs> we're gonna try for sure. uh, that's something we can look at. Um, I think also they were, were were referring to plants being placed in the wrong places mm -hmm. as well, and not you know them outgrowing the areas. You also so. have a lot of vandalism with urban trees. Yes. It's just it, it's it's one of the things that we're always fighting against. But you're right, and I think maybe that could be part of the uh, uh, part of a plan that we put together with the parks. We were looking at putting a, a, a list of how many trees the city actually has um, and putting a maintenance program for all the trees so to ensure that we're getting the best out of them. I'll make a motion. I'll second. I have a motion and a second. Please vote. So recently I did get a comment about uh, Aiton Road, the landscape in that area, that it looks very nice. So. Thank you for the hard work on that. Uh, executive right. Landscape, um, I, as soon as we send them an email or give them a phone call, if there's ever an issue that gets reported, they're very quick on responding and getting it taken care of. And then in, in addition to that, any time that in the past three years that we've been working with them, um, any time that we need to have additional plants planted or trees planted, they'll charge for the materials, but they donate their time. So. In my pocket park 
It's the best that's ever lived in its entire life. Except those damn creek myrtle trees that they planted. I told them when they planted them, they're dead. When they were planted, they still look dead. <laughs> creek myrtles are great trees. Creek myrtles are crap. No, 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 no. <laughs> no, it is. They need to, in fact, you know what? I'm going to take You're my such chainsaw. You're such a valley I'm going to let the chainsaw. I'm going to cut them down and then... <laughs> it's a motion pass. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> we'll leave that discussion for we'll some other time. More cactus, be spiny and hard to touch. No, I say I like green trees. I don't like some looks dead. It looks dead. Go to they the flower room. all summer long. They're wonderful. They're yeah. ugly. All right. So moving on to E three discussion action professional service agreement between the city of Imperial and Bob Murray and Associates. And Alexis will present. This one. Good evening, Mayor and Council. Before you, you have a professional services agreement between the City of Imperial and Bob Marine Associates. Uh, as you're aware, on October 30th, our City Manager, Stephen Chatwin, announced his acceptance for a City Manager position for the City of Fairfield, California. Uh, at your direction, we have entered into contractual negotiations with Bob Marine Associates. The city has a long-standing history with this firm for our executive search. They've brought us city managers, not only Mr. Chatwin, but as well as Marlene Best and Vince Long, and they also handed the recruitment for our police chief as well. So before you, you have an agreement in the amount of $17,500. Um, this is of not to exceed $24,700. Um, that being for the fact that expense reimbursements uh, will not exceed the amount of 7200 so total fiscal impact, 24700 And as discussed, this is, uh, this is the same amount that was agreed to over three years ago, three and a half years ago. Yes. And it is for the term until the search is completed. Okay. Any questions? Okay, sounds good. I'll make the motion. Okay, got a motion? Second. Second, please vote. Okay. Motion passed, 5 0. Moving on, E4, discussion action, uh, range classification, reclassification within management, supervisory, professional, confidential, and collective bargaining units. Mr. Mayor and members of the council, uh, this is something that we've discussed uh, together, uh, these three re reclassifications. Three positions that we're looking at are the human resources manager, an assistant city manager position, and the administrative services director. Human resources manager is currently a human resources analyst with the addition of responsibilities that will fall to that position. It, uh, it is... Uh, uh, it would be responsible to reclassify that position into a manager's role and provide to it the, uh, the, the appropriate pay grade. Uh, the management analyst position with uh, the restructuring that we have discussed, it is recommended that we reclassify that position to an assistant city manager position with a range 101. Uh, that position will uh, carry some additional supervisory responsibilities in addition to uh, other responsibilities uh, that that uh, that it already has or that will be added to that. And then the finance director position uh, will be reclassified uh, to an administrative services director position. With that finance, uh, the administrative services will now have human resources reporting to it as well as risk management and various other responsibilities uh, potentially in the future uh, as part of that reclassification. Uh, so that's what's before you here. You see there the fiscal impact on the human resources manager. It's a, a fiscal impact for this year of about $11,800. For the assistant city manager position, reclassification of fiscal impact this year of about $13,000. And for the administrative services director position, uh, reclassification of fiscal impact of around $47,000, dollars I'll stand for questions on that. Any questions? Mr. Gideon? No. Dale? Second? No, I'll go ahead and make the motion to approve. Number one. Number one. Okay. okay. Motion and second, please vote. Okay. Motion passed 5 0. Make the motion to approve number two. Thank you. Motion two seconds, please vote. Okay, 
Motion passed, 5 0. The sweep, I'll make the motion to approve number three. Second. Got a motion and a second, please vote. Okay, motion passed, 5 0. Okay, moving on, E5, discussion action reclassification of Director of Information Technology from contract employee to the uh, MSPC collective bargaining unit. Right, and this is uh, a recommended classification to arrange 102. Uh, as you know, uh, about a year, I think, ago, uh, or maybe more than that, uh, our information technology fell under a services contract. Uh, with that, our, our IT uh, director, and we've called him the IT director uh, for, for some time now, uh, has, uh, would, would not only provide IT services for us, but as a services contract, you provide those services to other communities or other people as well, uh, was, was able to do that. We changed that from a services contract to a contract with the individual that allowed us to have more access to, uh, to our IT director and have him uh, more focused on the city without having various other uh, clients out there. It also gave uh, him an opportunity to start to um, to start to um, eliminate some of those other clients that, that he had. As uh, I've spent time with the IT director taking a look at the future, it makes sense to switch that over from a contract over to a, an employee position uh, as part of the staff. Uh, the Range 102 is, uh, is appropriate based on the high level of tech, uh, technical requirement and skill that's required in that particular position. Uh, we also have an IT director who I think has proven uh, their worth over the years as, as, he has, uh, as he has taken care of everything from GIS to, uh, to, the, uh, to all the various other programs and needs that we have, uh, keeping us up to date, making recommendations on how to become more efficient in the city doing our work with new technologies, uh, all while managing a very um, tight budget to do this. Placing him on a 102, there is, uh, you'll notice there is a very slight fiscal impact. He will essentially be on that range 102, but towards the top of the, uh, the, the pay scale. Uh, so there are some things there. Once you hit the top of that ceiling, you're not, you, you do not get uh, merit increases any further. You're, you're eligible for uh, cost of living increases, but not merit. So there's potential that this actually saves the city some money in the future rather than having an open-ended contract where they can continue to get more and more and more. This puts this individual on a scale and puts a ceiling on where they can fall, and he's going to be at, at or a, a pretty close to that ceiling as it is. And so uh, the individual will receive uh, cost of living increases, when they are authorized by the city council, as they are authorized, but not merit. Uh, so, <clears throat> again, the fiscal impact this year is minor, about $1,100 this year. Future fiscal impact, you're probably looking at a savings by doing it this way. And I'll stand for questions. Do we have any questions? You sure you want this? <laughs> <laughs> I'll see you. Okay, it took a while to get there, so okay, but I'll trust you. No, I know we asked you this last time when you went from uh, contract to <coughs> contract with us. So well, yeah, there's uh, uh, been a, a lot of years working with the city, so for me and my family, it's like uh, the the way to go. So yeah, we appreciate the hard work. Absolutely. So thank you. I'll make that motion. So I have a motion. Okay. Please vote. Motion pass, 5-0. Moving on, E6, discussion action, community service department staffing. And Amber will take this one. Mr. Mayor, members of the council, uh, the Department of Community Services com currently provides services to citizens and visitors who utilize the city's library, special events, parks, and recreation services. The department staffing for the community services office currently consists of the director and the recreation specialist. Current Current staffing for the library are four part-time assistants, um, library assistants, and one part-time li uh, literacy coordinator. 
Seasonal part-time temporary rec leaders have been brought in sporadically to assist uh, with special events and office support as needed. Authorization to create an administrative assistant position within the community services de department will provide consistent customer service for walk-in traffic and telephone calls at the public library and community services office. The position will provide support services for all divisions without, within the department. The full-time position will be responsible for account receivables, which we have part-time staff at the front handling right now at the, um, at the library front counter. The annual salary for the, the, for the administrative assistance, um, assistant is $34,320 to $48,297. In order to support the fiscal impact, the department is requesting the recla reclassification of the vacant library supervisor position to, li um, to library technician, which will have a cost savings of between $19,947 to $28,080. The placement of the administrative assistant at the library front counter will also enable the reduction of hours of the part-time staff ensuring that all part-time staff stay under their 1,000 hours uh, per year. The department requests City Council to authorize the creation of the administrative assistant position within the Community Services Department. Okay. Do we have any questions? No. Makes sense. I'll move to approve. Got a motion? Second. Thank you. Please vote. Some yeah. <laughs> Motion pass. Thank you very much. Oh, thank you. Uh, moving on to E7, discussion action reclassification of library supervisor to library technician. And Amber can uh, wrap this one up, yes. I guess. You pretty much already see what's going on there with that one. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Are there any and questions or anything more you want to add? Amber? Yeah, it's just a very quick statement um, for those watching on, on social media. The library supervisor position has been officially vacant um, since September 21st. As of October, the community service offices has moved into the library building. Staff has evaluated the services required to efficiently and cost-effectively operate within the department. It is recommended to reclassify the library supervisor position to library technician. The library technician is placed at a range 57 on the Teamsters Local Union 542 um, salary schedule with an annual salary of $32,968 to $46,000. $384. The library supervisor position, position has the annual salary of $52,915 to $74,464. The cost savings is from $19,947 to $28,080. It is the de department's recommendation to authorize the reclassification of library supervisor to a library technician. And what's your timeline on trying to fill this position? As soon as possible. I'll move to approve. Second. And a motion and a second, please vote. Okay, motion pass, 5 0. Moving thank on. Thank you. E8. Oh, thank you. Discussion action asphalt rubber composite over, uh, layer overlay along Puerto Vallarta Avenue from Fonzie to Rosarito Drive. The phone will take this one. Mayor and Council members, the Community Development Department conducted a competitive bid process to overlay the Puerto Vallarta Avenue from Fonsi Avenue to Rosarito Drive. Almost 50% of the road was never completed by the developer and still needed a second asphalt lift. The scope of work included grinding, leveling course, a ramp, and asphalt. Uh, the construction was successfully completed on November 15, 2019 and staff recommends approval of closing amount with final quantities and acceptance of completed work. And I'll stand for any questions that you may have. Any questions? This was paid for with CFD monies? CFD, is that is correct. And they actually closed out under the contract under the amount? Under contract amount, yes. Really? No change orders? Well, that's the balance in change order, but it can go up or down, either or. That's wow. absolutely shocking. So. <laughs> In that case, I'll happily make a motion to approve this. So I, I, I did go drive that today. It's really nice, you know. And so. It was needed. Yeah. Okay. Not a problem. That. So. so, Mr. The 
Yeah, so oh, Mr. Dale, Dale self. Made the motion, I'll second. Okay. So Mr. Dale excused himself, and so I have a motion and a second. So please vote. Don't get too used to that out there. Uh -huh. Take a picture. Okay. Uh, four. Four. Oh, yeah. Now, do we have to approve that number one and number two? Or? Yes. So that was a motion for number one. I'll make a motion for number two. I got a motion. A second, please vote. Once again, that's a 4 -oh. So thank you very much. And nice job. Thank you. All right, Mr. Dell, you're up. E9, Discussion Action Labor Compliance for Waste Water Treatment Plant Upgrade Project. And Jackie will present this. Well, Mr. Mayor and Council, as part of the uh, Waste Water Upgrade Project, one of the things that we need to have is someone that performs the labor compliance portion of the, the uh, project. Uh, we put out to bid uh, the request for an RFP for uh, pricing. We only received one uh, proposal back. It's from the Labor Compliance Consultants of Southern California in the amount of $30,240. And this is something we need to get in place prior to sending out the notice to proceed to the contractor. So we recommend approval. Any questions on this? Being done, I'll make the motion approved. I'll second. second. Jeff can second. She is faster. <laughs> you got a motion and a second. Please vote. <laughs> Labor compliance. Okay. Motion passed. 5 0. Moving on to E 10 discussion action regular meeting of January 1st. Debbie will present this one too. It is a big question. Should we do this or not? Mr. Mayor, Council members, your first meeting in January happens to fall on New Year's Day, January 1st of 2020. As you're aware, staff, City Hall will be closed, and I'm sure everybody might be out celebrating the night before and may not want to come in for a meeting. So No, I'll be good to come in. So what you're saying is if we have a meeting, all of these people have to come to work on New Year's Day. Yes. I think you should have the meeting. I think so. <laughs> <laughs> I'll make the mo motion to approve. No, wait a minute. So who's the meeting? No meeting. No meeting. No meeting. I'm not coming. Okay, I got a motion to approve to council and or reschedule the city council meeting of yeah, January 1st. Have to Schedule for emergency. We'll deal with that then. All right. There goes my farewell party. Oh, yeah. okay. So I got a motion to cancel oh, reschedule. There's no schedule. second. It'll die for lack of a second. second. Ah, don't. Oh, there it is. Second. <laughs> she bailed you guys out. Mm -hmm. All right. Should have done it on the 31st. Jeff would know. Bah humbug. Go on. Jeff, you know you will be up right that time at the so motion still passed for one. Uh, e e eleven. Let it be known among city staff who voted against that. <laughs> Discussion action. Removal and replacement of rubber surfacing at Victoria Park, Sky Ranch, and Savannah Ranch. Tony's going to present this first, as well as the next one. Mr. Mayor, uh, members of the council, um, I'm here to present the or suggest the removal of replacement of rubber surfacing for. Sky Ranch Park, Savannah Park, and Victoria Park. Um, the poor in place rubber surfacing at Savannah, Sky, and Victoria are in poor condition and have exceeded life expectancy. All, an inspection of all three parks confirmed that they need to be completely removed and replaced of the existing surfacing due to weathering, severe granulation, spider cracks, and top layer peeling. Uh, fiscal impact for Savannah is an estimated of 123,600. For Sky Ranch Park, that's a typo, uh, it's 24,000. And for Victoria Park, it would be 106,000. Um, it is the department's so recommendation. Yes. Yeah. 
Um, it's the department's recommendation for council to authorize the seeking of bids for the removal and replacement of existing rubber servicing at three, three locations. What's the funding source for this number so the council knows? It's, it's from the landscape mining district. Well, we go out and look for bids. Are we going to, for replacement of the rubber or using the engineered wood fiber? Uh, all of these three sites or all four sites um, that we have rubber surfacing on have an under a subsurface of concrete. Oh. So it'd be uh, a lot more expensive for the removal because to put engineered wood fiber and we would have to go to a 12 inch depth yeah. for it to be compliant with uh, so you're the standard. Place, yeah. Yes, so it'd be just removing the existing and, and pouring a new system into place. Uh, you also, uh, in the long term, will save money. It's, uh, the rubber, if it's taken care of and everything, will last longer than the wood fiber, and so in the long term, it's actually cheaper. Okay, so we run into this at Eager, where we had to tear out and put in the wood fiber because it wasn't maintained. Now we've got three more here that are needing to be pulled out because of basically not having a system for monitoring and maintaining. That's correct. I see there's another agenda item following where we're going to be doing a pour to repair or seal one, so I assume that's the type of maintenance we're going to be looking for at. So what sort of a timeline plan are you developing to take care of these other three that we're about to spend a third of a million dollars on, or a quarter million dollars on? When you say timeline, when you, like how fast? Are you... How often are you going to be going in and inspecting? How often are we going to be going uh, to resurface these? So the recommended uh, roll coat for this type of weather and most of these playgrounds being in very little shade, yeah. having very little shade is once a year, okay. um, at the very latest, uh, once every two years, recommended by um, the manufacturer. Mm -hmm. So um, along with these repour and removals, a lot of these companies offer a class that would teach uh, our staff to roll coat and repair um, while they're doing the work. So not only will we get that uh, repaired and replaced, we would have staff learn how to do it so that staff can absorb that duty uh, moving forward as far as protecting the surfacing for, for we can protect it and give it a longer life. Okay. So would, would you be seeing any sort of a plan developed then? That's, yes. That would, that's typically when, when the porn place um, is installed, they typically put in a two-year maintenance plan and put that in the budget, um, so you follow that. So all the parks, um, unfortunately, that was not done in the beginning. And then um, in 2017, we had them inspected, um, and we had the same findings. It just... Yeah, I'm not yeah. looking oh, back. Oh, oh, yeah, definitely. So that's so not so concerned, moving forward, forward, yeah, forward, exactly. We would do it. So moving, moving forward, we'll have... Um, once the rip, once it's actually done, the seal will be put on the new uh, system, and then we would put in a maintenance program. And I would recommend probably with this weather once a year. That's fine. As long as we start writing, we know that there's a schedule for it. That would be helpful. Can I ask a question? Can is there any way possible from this point forward, anytime you put a, a playground structure like this in? I've been saying this since I've been on this council. Why aren't we planting trees around these these play structures? Yeah. I mean, if you go out and, in that pocket park, we yep. planted those new desert aspens or whatever they are. I have a 40-foot one in front of my house, and that's it's eight years old. Yeah. Yeah. Those trees that were planted two or three years ago are already at 15, 20 feet right now. Yeah. That was three years ago when they were planted. If we planted more of those trees to where they block a lot of that sun, it's just, and it's cooler for the kids to play, right. the structure's cooler, and it helps you not having to so, worry about So with that, answering that question, or, or your, 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 um, your question there is, um, when we did the planting of the trees, uh, I specifically chose locations surrounding uh, a lot of these rubber surface parks Good. to be shaded in the future. Yeah. Um, and and did you do them with a fast growth tree like that? I uh, rose well rosewoods or are, are yes rosewood, right so that the the sisu or the the, the, the yes yeah. um that that those were planted surrounding the playground Good. um Good. for future shading Good. in I mean, those areas. Nothing to say we can't learn from our past to make it better going forward. 
20 years down the road. So. I just but, am amazed with those trees. When we were kids, we never had those. And they come along and they mm -hmm. grow just fantastic yeah. and quick. Okay. So good. Thank you. And going forward, this is probably, do you think this is a material we should probably deter developers from using in parks? Because it just seems like it's too much maintenance. If, they have to, if we have to change it out every year, yeah. it seems so costly. Well, no, no. We would have to, we have to put the protective roll coating on it every year to, to, uh, to keep the, the rubber together because once that roll coating breaks off or it, it, it's no longer it starts it starts creating separation and then you get peeling and those types of things the yeah the coating and, and yeah like I mentioned before that would be something that uh, staff would be doing not a contractor moving forward I think that's to the point though maybe if we're looking at other projects other developments coming in and more parks coming along with us Maybe what we should be looking at, if they're not going to put a shade over their park, is to have them go down 12 inches and fill it in with sand and then put in the, go with the wood instead, simply because that's going to be over long term. That's why we did it here. Over long term, that winds up being more cost effective. And I agree with that. What was it? Is that Cambria Park? Was, is that, was that sand or wood? That's, that's, that's wood chips. Mm -hmm. Wood chips. Uh, the corn place actually ends up being more cost effective in the long run as long it. as you maintain it. Okay. That's the big. Oh, that's fine. Yeah. As long as it's shaded well, yeah. but Cambria Park has a really nice shade. I yeah. love that yeah. that shade over there. You know, it'll be but an interesting negotiation point going forward with, you, with the developers, though, who are trying to now wanting to build without CFDs. Mm -hmm. We need to consider the fact that without CFDs, you know, we would be paying out of general fund to do these repairs on parks that they're mm -hmm. putting in. So as they're coming in and building future developments in this town, we need to really th seriously think about what do we want the developer to build in as far as fee structure to support those amenities. I'm thinking right now, several projects we have that are underway, they're going to cost us millions of dollars in the long run. Um, and we're only able to fund them because we have access to those CFD funds. And they want to promote new housing developments without CFDs, but they want all those amenities. That's going to come out of our general fund. So we need to weigh that in. Stupid question. Why do we have to have all that? Why can't you have nice green grass that's fluffy and kids can play on it? We all survive our okay. maze. <laughs> yeah. I mean, that or, or sand. I mean, yeah, sand I mean, good. seriously. Uh, with that, you get into a lot of compliance issues oh, as yeah. far as uh, falling uh, and fall absorption. Yeah. So, whenever you have you know, a platform at different heights, whether it's four foot, six foot, or eight foot, you install a system accordingly uh, to your fall height. So Wouldn't it be cheaper to buy a bubble wrap? <laughs> it would, yes. Legality-wise, yeah, would it be good? And, and yeah. sand, sand, unfortunately, is not ADA compliant. Um, so that that's where we run into that now. I get it. I do. But I certainly think that's something we're going to have to consider with the developers because they're coming in and bringing forward projects and they don't want to put CFDs in. I get it, but at the same time, if we're going to be able to maintain the parks, the walls, <laughs> you know, et cetera. We need resources to do that, and that can't come out of district or something. Yeah, and that can't come out of our out of our general fund every time. We've got to make sure there's something there for that. So the sand isn't ADA compliant, but the wood chips are. Yes. Sand's bad because the cats, that's their oh, name. Yeah. Giant litter box. And then kids yeah. are out there playing with Tootsie Rolls. They make it with that too. So. All right. Thank you, Jenny. I appreciate the information. That's what I need to I'll make a motion to approve number one. Second. Yeah. Got a motion and a second. Please vote. Gosh, I remember the good old days where we had that slide over there. It was metal and it was 280 degrees in the summer time. And we survived. It was amazing. You're, you're also the one that rode off the down. roof of your house on your bike. <laughs> That's right. First we pass by vote. I'll make a motion to approve number two. And and motion. Yeah. Second, okay. please vote. I can tell you stories about people making money off of falling off those slides. Yeah. That's what, well, never mind. I'm going to say that. I'll make a motion to approve to number yes. three. Okay, motion passed 5 0. Get a motion and a second, please vote. The only playground playset thing they needed to get rid of was the, what was the one? The, that was the, the best one. No, I know, but now <laughs> what we used to, we used to take a motorcycle and uh, take the back. Merry go round? It was very yeah, go round. and it'd give it about 50 miles an hour. It was about cool, kids flew everywhere. Right, motion passed 5 0. Moving on to E12, Discussion Action Maintenance Board. <laughs> of Rubber Servicing at Aviation Park. 
one? Mayor, council members, um, this is for the maintenance and repair of the rubber surfacing at Aviation Park. Um, to ensure the pour in place rubber surfacing has a longer life expectancy and is protected from weathering and damage, it is recommended that the surfacing is roll coated every two years. The existing pour in place rubber surfacing at Aviation Park requires roll coating and minor patches from wear and tear. Uh, the estimated fiscal impact would be 7,600. And this would be coming out of the landscape lighting district and it is the department's recommendation for council to authorize the seeking of bids for the maintenance and repair of the rubber surfacing. What's the age on that? Five, uh, it's going to go, it's going on a sixth year, I believe. Is that original, right? Yes. It was installed in 250, 250, oh, so five years, yes. Yes. And is the structure in, in fairly decent, you know, it's in good shape, right? The now. surface in? Do the overlay yes. A there's, right. There's, there's some minor uh, uh, tear, um, and uh, it's not at that point where the granulation is, is such where you can't roll coat it and get a warranty from, from the person that, or the company that's doing it. Now the it's, it's getting there. Yes. It's getting close. When you're talking so. about a roll coat, is this just a, a material that you put on and then roll it onto the top of the surface of the of the rubber mat, or what? It it's it's a glue substance that binds the rubber surfacing together to prevent separation and cracking. Okay. okay. So basically, though, you're yes, rolling it it's rolling on. Okay. Um, and you were proposing to do this every two years. Every year. Every year. Every year. Every year. I think that's fantastic. Yeah. No, I think it'll be you know, just, if it saves those parks. Yeah. No, well, I'm just it. looking at the cost of what it's cost. Of I mean, how nice would it have been if we could have cut either yeah. 10 years ago and made, you know, gotten that to where, or five years ago. Yeah, can so we, we would just like to tear it all out. But, but you know? also understand that what he's, what he's recommending in the future is that our guys learn yeah. how to do this. Yes. Yes. Yeah. 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 We'll do it ourselves. Yes. So there will be a savings on that to where we won't have to hire somebody to do that yeah. on a continual basis, uh, park staff will be able to uh, write. That's great. So this is, we're going, this, is this one would be a bid. A bid. Yes. But then in the future. In the future, yes. Uh, Moving forward. That's yes. That's the way we'd love to see it. So move. Okay, got a motion and a second. So I do have a comment, Tony. This is one of those, I, I had a conversation over this park on Monday and how, you know, these newer parks that we have that are really nice, but the vandalism really hurts us. And this is one of those ones that we talked about. And I know we brought it up here a couple meetings ago that, yep. you know, we try, we try, and but vandalism really hurts us. And this is the cost behind it. But where we can, you know, take it and learn, have our staff learn how to do this can save us a lot of money and get those parks, you know, nice looking for our residents. What was the vandalism? They broke uh, one of the airplanes. They broke the sign, ripped off the sign, kicked down the lights. Don't we have cameras in these parts? I don't know about that one. Even with the cameras, yeah. it's, hard it's hard to, to identify. Uh, yeah. It's hard to identify. Uh, sometimes you can, and you can kind of yeah. use that as part of the investigation. Yeah. Neighborhood watches. Yeah. If you have good active neighborhood watches in all the neighborhoods, that can help. But yeah. vandalism is the hard part. Unfortunately, it's it, it, it is. Jesus, what it is. Or that Our the neighborhood watch can, paintball guns. That we can really get because this. I mean. We don't even stop it. I mean, the ones that are vandalizing may be the same ones vandalizing in other places, too. It's, yeah. and, and, so and that's probably right. Um, what we do on our side is try and document every situation, every case we come across, um, whether when we're doing our parks inspections um, with uh, PD, um, that do a report and then, you know, pictures and removal to have just kind of documentation of how, how, how often and how much damage they cause because you know sometimes it's very minimal it's you know a marker and you know sometimes it, it can cause thousands and thousands of dollars I was gonna say, do we have anything i remember one time we had something with a little bit of teeth that we'd have to actually go out to the parents of these kids and yeah, this or, is can same. we still do that to where we can put a lien against them if they pay restitution or do something to pay this back because this is not fair to the citizens I know we did it at one time. But could we still do that? There, there is state law that makes parents responsible. I think the big issue is catching yeah. them. Right? And this is the same neighborhood where the wall gets knocked down. 
you know, it's the same, it's probably the same group of kids that are doing the same so thing. So that's what I'm saying. Maybe we need to find some way of putting up cameras that are in a different angle or cross angles that we can actually get good face on it. Some lighting, more lighting. Because um, they're obviously doing this in the evening, I'm sure, when they're tearing it up. Rock salt. <laughs> oh, I agree rock with salt. you. No, I, I really get Neighborhood guy, watch with rock salt. Oh, uh, the guy from Singapore that whipped all those kids' ass. Nah. Seeds, that's what they need. Rock salt kept me out of watermelon field a couple times. You all know, right. it work. So I have a motion. Oh, so I'll make the motion. <laughs> no, I already had one. Motion in a second, so please vote. Second. But Tony, Amber, thank you guys very much for the hard work on the park. It looked really nice. It's the parents, too. Because well, as long as my kids yeah. tore up structures or vandalized or graffiti, I beat their ass till they couldn't sit down. <laughs> it's ridiculous. Do we have editing software? <laughs> then they wonder why their kids are in prison. I, I do want to add on that, yeah. though. Uh, with the air, airplanes, we have had a lot of vandalism um, through the years on those two rocking airplanes. So um, looking at the pour-in-place from the bend of it, from people using it, it's also tearing up the um, pour-in-place rubber. So we're going to be looking at removing those and replacing it with a different play feature. Yeah. So. Like every time I see those at parks, wherever it is, they're always broken. Yeah. So yeah. With liability. Yeah. Is that the, like that big, the big drama yeah. that used to have a Buckland yeah. Park. Oh, yes. We used to try to launch kids. Try to brace yourself on it. Good times. Mm -hmm. yeah. Thank you, Amber. Okay, moving on to E13, Discussion Action, Imperial Light Parade, and Mark Day's report. And this is going to be Amber presenting this. All right. All right. Um, Mr. Mayor, members of the council, we have two maps that we're going to put on uh, the screens for you. So we can kind of go over the route, give you some basic information, um, and then um, answer any questions that you may have. Um, so the city of we're going to start with uh, the Market Day's um, map right now, and the Market Days um, is going to be held on the north end of Barioni Boulevard. So as you're aware, uh, the City of Imperial is hosting the Imperial Light Parade and Market Days uh, this Saturday, December 14th, uh, from 5 p.m. until 10 p.m. Uh, starting at 5 p.m., Imperial Market Days will be held on the north end of Imperial Avenue between 10th and Barioni. 76 spaces were available for the December event and all spaces have been reserved. So we are taking um, a list of other um, people wishing to participate just in case we have some cancellations. The, ice skate, uh, the synthetic ice skating rink will be located on the east end of 9th Street. Ice skates will be available in sizes 9 youth through 13 men's. So, okay. Councilman um, Dale can squish his little toes. Nine youth, mean that, that's for little kids? Um, nine youth yeah, and then 13. You <laughs> um, and so, and these um, skates are going to be made available for the um, free um, public use to ice skate. <laughs> Tina Michelle and the Rainstone Cowboys will perform on the main stage area, which is located at Barioni and Imperial Avenue, uh, which um, that's where we always have our main stage. So there's no changes with that. Uh, and they will perform from 5 p.m., which is the start of Imperial Market Days, until 6 p.m. Um, that will be uh, entertaining the people that are waiting for the parade, entertaining the attendees of the Market Days, and then they will announce to um, everyone to go to their seats for the parade um, before the parade starts. Starting at 6 p.m., we'll move to the map for the Parade of Lights. Um, the Parade of Lights will travel north along Imperial Avenue, starting at 2nd Street, turn left at Barioni Boulevard, and travel west towards D Street, ending at the Imperial High School. The new route was recommended by the Special Event Committee, which consists of fire, police, and community services. The route was redesigned to accommodate the size of the parade, um, of the parade attendees and in, the re and in response to traffic concerns from recent uh, years. Parade staging will take place at 4 p.m. and entries will be judged at 5 p.m. Judged categories include the Mayor's Award, 
the Grand Marshall Award, Rogers and Rogers Award, School Spirit Award, and the Imperial Crown Award. The winner of each category will have a banner presented before them in the parade and will be announced the, as the winning category. Following the parade, winners will be stationed at Barioni Boulevard for the duration of, market, of the Market Days event. Street closures will begin at 11 a.m. Residents south of Barioni Boulevard will be allowed access to and from their homes through D and E streets, turning west on Barioni and using Liberty and, and Austin roads to enter and exit the city during the event. Parade staging will begin at 4 p.m. on 1st and 2nd streets. Los Vigilantes will be assisting the city with staging. Residents in the impacted areas will be notified by three different forms of communication via e utility bill insert, email, and door hangers. Parade entries will enter from Worthington to D Street to 1st and 2nd Street, or 1st or 2nd Street, depending on their staged area. Parade entries will exit north on Liberty to 12th Street, having the option of 12th Street, Belford, or Nickel Road. Group entries will exit south on D Street to unload at ben, the Ben Holtz parking lot. Parade announcing um, will, be, will be stationed at 2nd, 4th, 6th, the intersection of Barioni and Imperial Avenue, G, and E Streets. The Police Command Center will be located behind the main stage. AMR has committed a unit to be on, this, on site next to the Command Center. And the fire will be stationed on 7th Street near H Street. We have um, use of 25 radios from Iveca, which um, those will be distributed to um, staff so we can have communications throughout the event. What time are you closing access to 2nd Street? I will turn to public services, he has. Between 11 and 1, as we get to it in a two hour window. And the residents living inside the box choosing to leave town for whatever reason after 11 o'clock will have to exit out over on D or E onto Worthington and go out westbound that way. Mm -hmm. Yes. So we're lining up on both first and second. Correct. Yes. Could we make sure that on first and second, maybe at the front, and maybe towards the middle or again on each street, uh, fortified? Yes, those are um, <coughs> um, planned. Plan. Repeat okay. to me, where did you say groups would be um, able to the exit groups, at the, at the um, end? They will be notified to exit at, uh, on D Street, they can use utilize the parking lot at Ben Hulse. Um, that way they can okay. be picked up by parents. This parade route is really nice. This, this takes us back to the days of of the fair the parade. parade. That's yes. how it started. So, and I like the idea of going down to the <laughs> school. That's pretty cool. Very will, good. will the school be open to assist with anything or no? Or that was all going to be locked down? Do we know? Um, no, they're they've committed to Ben Holtz. Yeah. I think it's intended that'll stay locked. We're not yeah. planning on using yeah. the school okay. Okay. We're trying to move the traffic away from the end of um, the parade, which is right in front of Imperial High School, so we want to take them. We want um, to get them off of Marioni when the parade ends, rather than having. You remember with the Andy Ruiz thing, you had all the congestion there, where they're trying to turn into the parking lot. This is to get them heading south now, away from the parade route, uh, and 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 then dropping off people a little bit further away, where they can be picked up by parents. And then the other ones are going to go north on the Brucery. Correct. Right. Well, and then now, they have three options of um, exiting. Okay. Well, they're if they decide to park anywhere, there are going to be problems parking on the on that bank by the high school. Do we know? That's the the private property. The IID property. Yeah. Um, they can get there, I guess, and it's open, right? Is that straight right, there where right. the bank is behind the <clears throat> field, open, we're not closing that street off, right? 
No, we're not closing that. So store, as no. far as parking there, we don't have anything to do no, with okay. that. That's IID yeah. property. If IID wants to block that off and say no parking, similar to what they did with the Andy Reese celebration, that's up to them. Um, and we'll reach out to IID and let them know just in case they want to do something. Like I'm not sure I'm understanding. If someone tried to leave at 6.30 p.m., how do they get out of that neighborhood? D Street. I'm sorry? D Street. So they're going to drive down D Street to where the parade is ending at 6.30 p.m.? So where the floats are coming to, they're going to drive out and hang a left? It's the only way out. It's only for one night. No, I, I get it. Could, but, we, uh, could but, we open the other road, though, for that one night? To deter traffic around to Liberty back by the water plant around that way. B. Reverse the one way. Just reverse it for that. Reverse night. the one way for that night. I have you guys that are going to be stationed both at B or Liberty and Barryoni and D and Barryoni a lot of traffic in and out. I have I have guys already planned for that purpose. I would suggest you reverse. Don't change it now. Mm -hmm. Okay. How many floats do we have so far? Um, 342. Parade entries? <laughs> <Parade entries. laughs> we have uh, 20 something entrants so far, but it's very early. The way this usually goes is uh, folks sign up a day or two before the parade. But we are, we are uh, proactively reaching out to them. We, we've done that via email, and we're making calls now, reaching out to folks who have done this in the past. To get an answer as to whether or not they're planning on being in it or not. Is there like a big shortcut link on our web page that somebody can go to? Just click a button and yep. it takes them to where they can sign in? Yep. Big rotating banner. Okay. And stuck at the top of our website. So with all the information and applications. This always happens in the last minute. It, does. Seven, it seven, really seven, does. 70 entries in yeah, the last that's second. fine. The, uh, no, no schools? bands and stuff like that I would need to review I I know Imperial okay. is um, signed up I am not sure about the other cities we've, we've not had uh, at least the years that I've been around the other cities you uh, drew a few small yeah. rules yeah. mm -hmm. to come in and that's usually yeah. about the extent of it so will anyone be judging the grade traditionally we've had they've had judges we yes okay. yes um, so we have um, some sponsors that will be assisting with judging. Um, we have our mayor that will be judging his own category, our grand marshal judging their own category, and then we've invited Rogers and Rogers to judge the vehicle category. That judging takes place before the parade. Correct. Yes. So yes. Uh, unlike in years past, we probably what's more typical is you do judging for most of the categories before the parade starts. Okay. Uh, and you know, unless it's like judging the music. Mm -hmm portion of a band or something, uh, but so that's going to take place before the parade happens. Well, I look forward to the new route. I look forward to this uh, new uh, market day parade. And so, yeah, I think it'll be fun. I love the arrangement of the market. I love the arrangement of the parade route with one exception, but that's okay. And I'm just, I'm hoping to be proven wrong for my worries on 2nd Street and on D, and that's and I trust your your guys. Again, I just have to see it happen. But I like what we're doing with it. I think it's the right direction to go. But I'm fun. Um, <laughs> and have fun with it. So, uh, we did have one um, more meeting to confirm uh, with the public services, fire department, and the uh, police department. And so they did sit down with a large map, looked at all the um, areas that are going to be blocked off, and there was no concerns that they had. So. Hopefully, um, our residents will be happy, and hopefully they'll attend. Accommodating. The, uh, <laughs> attend Bar the barricades will be using the heavy barricades for this stuff. Yes. Very cool. Six announcing stations? Yes. Still? Yes. Good. That's important. I mean, the last, on the other parades, we've got two. So that'll be nice. It'll keep yeah. everybody more in the loop. Yes. What's going on, and hopefully get them over to market. Yes. I think that'll be awesome. Um, okay, thanks. Dale, Ms. Eugenio, any questions? No. Ms. Tucker? Nope. Ms. Dale? Appreciate it. No. Good. Ms. Beckham? Okay, got a motion? Got a motion. 
I don't know what the action is. Oh, yeah. It's oh, just there was no action. action. It says right oh, there. It's 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 there's nothing action. there to act. So it's action. Yeah, well. I wanted to vote on it. I agree. So, with you. Oh, good. I'm supporting All right. Staff. Well done. Good job. All right, so moving on to F uh, for reports. Mayor and council member reports. So we'll start on my right, Ms. Eugenia. How much here? I just had a good Thanksgiving. Hopefully everyone enjoyed their Thanksgivings as well. Looking forward to all these Christmas festivities. The route looks great. Thank you for everyone's work so far. And um, yeah, that's it. Thank you. Mr. Tucker? <clears throat> um, no, just asking for their community support and, uh, and our search for an uh, intern city manager and full-time city manager because it's a very tough decision. So, need your help. Yep. Yeah. Just had a fantastic Thanksgiving. And a lot of people in our neighborhood had a good time, so it's, it's nice. Just wanted to share them. Look forward to great lights, lunch days. Thanks to staff for all their hard work. Respectful? Um, number one, I really liked seeing our signs being used to promote the dates and the times and the closures. So people have had ample warning. Um, the one over uh, this morning was still out over by the high school. So. Yeah, something wrong with that. Okay, but I'm glad to see. Yeah. We have them. I'm glad to see them out getting used. That was great. <coughs> so that's cool. Um, Chief, the, the um, enforcement on the highway has hit social media. Good job. That's what we wanted. People have recognized that it's real, and I'm glad. So thank you for that. And otherwise, I'm looking forward to this. I'm very excited about market days coming up and um, art day. I'm looking forward actually to Christmas in a small town this weekend and looking for that success for the chamber. So I'm glad to see things moving forward and moving into a great time of year and a wonderful Thanksgiving. And yeah. hopefully the weeks ahead are going to be a blessing. Um, and I will echo what James said. I hope everybody's patient and supportive as we go forward in our movement to, to Finding an interim and finding a permanent city manager again and keep the city going. Yep. Thank you. So I echoed some of this stuff. I'm glad I hope everybody had a good Thanksgiving and it was everybody ate a lot. I know uh, <laughs> I know I did. Um, you know we got a little bit of rain again. So Jackie, thanks to the staff for all the hard work. I know that water's gotta go somewhere. So I know they work hard to pump the water out of the retention basins. As, exactly, it's got to go somewhere. So, um, please let staff know. Say thank you for the the hard work on that, and you know the hard work that everybody does to keep the city running. Um, look forward to the parade, uh, market days, and you know, uh, Mr. Pector was saying the uh, what is it, uh, Christmas in a small town on Saturday. Um, that one and uh, the jingle mingle. That one, the jingle and mingle is coming up next week, and then we have. Uh, the Navy Base Parade mm -hmm. uh, this Friday. Friday, so that's another one that's looking forward to. So uh, there's a lot of good stuff coming. So thank you, staff, for everything. And uh, um, I do have one big thing that I can ask Mr. Uh, Chetwin is uh, I did have a call from a resident in regards to Alejandro Street. Uh, maybe you can help with that. I guess they're drag racing, racing down Alejandro Street. So there's something the ask him to speeding down, and... speeding down. So. Yeah. So appreciate it. That's the one. So other than that, I thanks for all the hard work and. Or I can I, go out with a timer and. Time. <laughs> I was hoping they were when they said they were drag racing. There was a little race, the little remote control sounds, cars, like they were doing like at Ricochet. Right. So, yeah, so, RC guys. Oh, sorry, but uh, I know we're doing. I know our police department is <laughs> doing good work because we have it on the report. So. <laughs> with, all three thousand or four thousand. Four thousand three hundred eighty. That's awesome. Nice. So, thank you guys very much for the hard work. So, with that, we'll move on to uh, the Tempest report. City manager. Uh, you, you have the uh, city manager's report in front of you. Uh, Chief Estrada sends his regrets. He was on his way in and had to stop at a two-car accident that held him up. And the battalion chief is in Winter Haven on a call. So, uh, he uh, he's, uh, apologizes for not being able to be here. Uh, just a reminder, we have our employee Christmas party as well coming up. If you have not had a chance to RSVP for that, please do so. It is uh, uh, advertised as a party for the adults. Uh, however, uh, if, if you're unable to get babysitting or you, you, you have a child that you want to bring, please uh, feel free to bring 
uh, your, your child along. We just won't have, like we've had in years past, some of the games and things that cater towards the kids. Mm -hmm. uh, we're, we're trying something a little bit different this year, and it's going to be a great, uh, it'll be a great party, a great celebration. We look forward to having you all there. If it's your high school uh, uh, kid that uh, doesn't have anything better to do that night, uh, tell him to go to a movie or hang out with his buddies and uh, and uh, leave them at home or, or whatever. Uh, but uh, of feel free to bring your, you your children if you can't get babysitting or whatever. We'd love to it's see them. Uh, other than that, I'll stand for questions if you have any for me. Questions? Yep. See you none. All right. Thank you. Mr. Loper. That's good. Always good. Awesome. Good. Chief. All right, Amber, Alex, Laura, Photon. Okay, so I did notice one thing. We all kind of trimmed down. No shade, <laughs> November's off. So. What do you mean we all? Oh well, <laughs> that's natural. Yeah, well. yeah. but uh, so yeah. With that, moving on. Let me see. Uh, Navy base. <coughs> Good evening, Mr. Mayor, Council, staff. Uh, we're about to uh, shut down for the Christmas holiday, so uh, we're, it's going to get very, very quiet here shortly. Uh, we'll get the last few squadrons out here, and uh, then we're going to close down for our maintenance on the uh, runway for the rest of the year. We'll be reopening uh, first part of next year. First week of January, we'll be reopening up, and we all know what that means, right? Special visitors come? Yep. Yep. <laughs> Okay, we do have our holiday parade this Friday. Uh, it is open to the public. It is free parking, free access, free every well, free cookies. We have to pay for the pizza and the nachos. Last year we had 1,200 people attend from the community. We're hoping to boost that, and we're thankful very much for your participation this year. We look forward to having you all, and we want to thank you very much for a great year of support to the base. We couldn't do our job without you guys supporting us. Thank you. Thank you. By the way, Chris, uh, it seems like the Navy uh, personnel always participate in our parade uh, each year, don't they? And uh, didn't we have uh, entrance from the Navy last year at the at the parade? Yes, sir. Normally, you have uh, our boss contractor, uh, which wins every year. Yeah. So um. <laughs> we, I think the, the, the council shares in this uh, our appreciation for Thank you. The, yes. the Navy's participation in all of our special events and things. And, we notice uh, your base commander is uh, at a lot of the mixers mm -hmm. and things like that. It's, it's great to see that kind of participation. And Ember has even asked us, and we will have one of the judging stations will be handled by a couple of our sailors this year. That's nice. So we're definitely wanting to continue this partnership, and I think it's really good. And I'm looking for to forward to 2020. Uh, we've got a couple of things we're cooking up on the base that we're going to uh, reveal next year. If we can get all the logistics done, it'll be a really good... Uh, possibly a paintball tournament with our staff versus your staff, meaning your leadership, the city council versus my diehard uh, Hilo pilots. So we'll see what happens. Yes. So that's one of the things we're looking at. Well, we've got some of our resources and all that, and uh, so we're looking at doing some more fun things around the valley, including all of our our community partners. All right. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. I did miss Debbie. Do you have anything? Uh, Mr. Marina? <coughs> Nothing from okay. me. Okay. So I'll move along. Max. No. Alexis. No. Oh. All right, so we'll go to chamber. Uh, Mr. Pechel took my thunder, which I appreciate. <laughs> Just to remind you of the, uh, the uh, Christmas in Small Town, 31st Christmas in Small Town this Saturday, and so hopefully you can all attend. That's it. Thank you. Thank you. So with that, Mark, seeing no more questions, I'll adjourn this meeting.